historic motorcycle restoration friends that's what i'm doing during the next days and what i have here is a nearly 100 year old tank from a triumph model s and it's not only a gasoline tank check this out it has two fittings one is for oil one is for gasoline and now you will say it looks nearly perfect yes that's true but i have one big issue and the issue are five pinholes three on the bottom of the tank here and two on the sides and guess what now the tank is leaking let's check this out and let's fill in some water and it's dripping like hell this portion of the video is supported by simino as a creator, I have long video editing nights in my office, usually on uncomfortable chairs. But Simino now supports me with a gaming chair in a class of its own. The fabric is breathable and not a cheap artificial leather that lets you sweat and stick to. The assembly is easy, the super quiet rubber casters and the spring-loaded height adjustment are inserted into the chair base. The armrests are not cheap plastic but sturdy metal parts. The chair itself is attached to the base with four screws. The holders for the adjustable backrest are simply screwed to the chair together with the backrest itself. Then just place the lumbar cushion and I'm sitting comfortable while I edit the videos for you. The armrests are adjustable in position and height and the best thing about the chair is the footrest which even allows me to take a little nap in the office. Many thanks to Simono. Check out the offers on the website if you want to sit comfortable yourself. And now back to the motorcycle tank restoration. Yeah, that was all a bit fast. You have seen a strip tank, but we have to start at the beginning. And what I'm doing here is I'm applying a sheet of masking tape and I will draw on this masking tape with a marker to save the original decals. These are not printed, these are painted. So what I'm doing is I'm using a flexible triangle and the marker and I trace the original graphics onto this masking tape. After tracing all the lines and the Triumph logo, I removed the masking tape and put it back on the transfer paper. And now I have a flat sheet. I can scan with the scanner to create a digital data set. And that's needed to cut stencils for the new paint job. What I have to do before I can strip the tank is I have to find out the color of the decal. And to do that, I'm using color charts and it's a bit of try and error to find the original color of the decal. The green of the tank is not original and that's mainly the reason why I have to repaint the tank. I found out all these holes later during the blasting process. So the main reason was to change the color to an original gray. Before I can strip the color in the media blasting cabinet, I have to close the fittings for the oil and gasoline. You can see me measuring these fittings because what I like to do is I like to 3D print plugs for the fittings. I'm using a small 3D printer, the Creality Ender 3v3, which is super affordable and super fast. I'm using PLA, which is cheap filament, but good enough to print these plugs. I will use them one time and that's more than enough if you use the cheap PLA. And it takes maybe half an hour to create these plugs and they fit perfect. And that's the moment where you should know exactly what you are doing because the tank is not welded, it is soldered. And if you use the wrong blasting material like corundum or glass beads, you will destroy and remove the tin and you have only sheets of metal and not a complete tank and to avoid that I'm using a super soft blasting material which removes only the color without harming all these tin spots and when the tank is stripped you can see the tin these are these light spots which look a bit like aluminum compared to the darker metal and it's dripping like hell and the reason why I'm filling in water is to get rid of all the gasoline fumes. That's very important before I can start bracing. If I don't get rid of all the fumes, I can provoke a big bang, maybe an explosion. That's what I like to avoid. And to get rid of all the gasoline fumes, I'm washing the tank with water. I shouldn't ruin the tank. It's a one of a kind piece, 98 years old. So let's do it. Yes, it looks like welding, but it's not. It's electric bracing. I'm using a Kusi 3 wire, not a welding wire, and an automatic welding machine which braces the material on the tank. And I'm using also a super small current to avoid bracing holes in the tank. Remember the material is more than 100 years old and it's super easy to brace holes in the tank. So be careful, I'm doing it point by point as you can see. 
And then I'm using a finger file to send only a small area. It's an easy fix, which can be done in minutes. Wow, that was noisy, but the big question is, is the motorcycle tank still leaking? Let's find it out and let's fill in some water. And it's not, and that's how to repair a 98-year-old motorcycle tank. Next steps are the primer and painting the original paint job here in the world's smallest one-man custom paint job. Before I can do the paint job, I have to prepare the tank and I have to fill all the little dents and digs in the 100 year old sheet metal. Remember the tank is handmade and the sheet metal is not as perfect as a modern car panel. And I'm using aluminum putty over normal body filler because I like the aluminum putty much more. It's super strong and durable. Yes, it's hard to sand, but the durability is perfect. And I'm applying an epoxy primer, which is rust preventive and points perfect to the old sheet metal, also to the tin and the aluminum putty. I'm using an HVLP spray gun to apply the primer. And after applying primer, I have to do a wet sanding session. And what you see me doing here is block sanding. That means I'm using a wooden block to prevent sanding any dents in the applied primer. When you sand only with your palm, it's easy to sand dents in the applied primer and to avoid that I'm using a block and I'm doing block sanding to create super smooth and super slick panels. Tank is prepped and mounted in the paint booth and next I have to mix the base color. I need a scale, laptop, color software. Let's go! And here we are back at the paint booth. The spray gun's loaded with the base coat 1.0 needle nozzle combination. Let's go! Most of the work is done, but the graphics are missing. I not only applied the gray base coat, I also applied a layer of 2K hard solid clear coat, as you can see. That's to protect my color. And what I have to do now is a light sanding of the clear coat with wet sand on my wet sanding bucket and 800 grit wet sanding paper. And I'm doing the wet sanding to produce some grip for the next layers of color. The clear coat itself is much too slick, the colors won't stick and the decals will peel off. So a wet sanding to roughen the surface is a must for a good bond in between the colors. I cut the stencils for the side decor and the Triumph logo with my sign maker. Now I have to remove all the parts I like to paint. The ruby red outline, also the golden areas and then I can stick on this mask on the tank. And I'm ready for some airbrushing. The tank is masked, I pre-mixed all the colors I need for the graphics. Now I can fill one of my airbrushes and can start to spray the outlines. Historically, it's made with pinstriping, but this time we do a modern technique. We use the airbrush technique and we spray all the colors on the tank. And I'm using an airbrush with a needle nozzle combination of 0.5, which is perfect for fill-in backgrounds and spraying these lines. And the color itself is water-based. That produces super thin coatings, which is needed to avoid any gaps in between the color and the clear coat I will apply later. And as you can see, I'm spraying areas, then I'm using masking tape to mask areas. I'm spraying the next color, red at first, then the gold, the triumph, and I mask the triumph with masking tape, then I'm spraying the green. I remove the masking tape, and as you can see, I have golden lettering. That needs some patience to remove the masking tape. And yeah, you have to be patient not to destroy the lines or the color itself because it's super thin as mentioned before. And the absolutely last step is a layer or two layers of two component high solid clear coat. 
I'm using again needle nozzle combination of 1.0 that's perfect for these small tanks and also a small spray gun as you can see. And that's all. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Don't miss the footage of the completed tank. Goodbye.